We have the lovely little male gonads here that are not like the female. They're not grainy and they're not tan. And if I rip it, it's just still smooth. There's no graininess to it. Um, the first big hole you see down here on males is the anus. Okay, but they have two holes in succession after that. The first one is going to be the genital pores, and the third one is um, your urinary pore, which is your urinary papilla, and probably, I'm going to go around to all the tables, so if I'm not to you, I will get you. So, yeah, I'm trying to find the, the air bud. Okay, that was last week. Anyway, um, let's see if I can still see a cardinal vein here. Okay. Okay. All right, so we have, where I'm going to start is where blood is coming into a vein, all right? And veins typically carry deoxygenated blood, right? Right, coming back to the heart. So you have... Um, all these organs here, and they're dumping their deoxygenated blood, all of them, into what's known as the common cardinal vein, okay, which is going to be located somewhere up in here. It's kind of mushy, so you really can't see it. They're really large, but if they get destroyed, you know, because they don't have that nice thick, the, the tunica media that we learned about in the first part of the quarter, okay, so they get destroyed fairly easy. But anyway, the common cardinal veins, because there's two of them, if we look at the picture, are bringing blood into the atrium, okay, which is our first structure of the heart, which is this flap right here. See that? That's the atrium. And they're bringing blood into the atrium via the sinus venosus, okay? So you have your sinus venosus here. It's just like a hole, okay? And then, so you've got common cardinal vein, blood through sinus venosus into the atrium, okay? From the atrium, blood's going to flow into the ventricle here. The ventricle is this big part of the heart that you can see, okay? That big part right there. From the ventricle, blood is going to flow into the bulbous arteriosus, which is the bulby part attached in front, so here's the ventricle, okay, here's bulbous arteriosus, it's right there, okay? Um, can I see this real quick? Bulbous arteriosus, okay. From the bulbous arteriosus, it's going to flow forward into the ventral aorta, ventral because it's the ventral side of the animal, right? From the ventral aorta, you're going to have eight separate <laughs> veins running off, okay, to each side of the body. So it's four on one side and four on another, okay, and they're paired. They're each numbered for whichever branchial arch they are bringing blood to. So if it's this one, the outermost one, that's the first afferent branchial artery. Afferent because the blood is running away from the heart, okay. First afferent branchial artery on the left, second left afferent branchial artery, third left branchial artery, and then fourth left branchial artery, okay? They go into the gills, they pick up oxygen from the gills, and they come out. Now they're headed back towards the heart, and they're called efferent branchial arteries, okay? So when they come out, it's still on the left-hand side, and here you can see, this is what I was clearing out, this is our first left efferent branchial artery, and the blood in there is oxygenated now, okay, that's why it's pink. And then, from the first left efferent branchial artery, there's going to be branching off to the left and the right. When, if you guys can see, it's making a little, like, see how it branches there? It's going up and to the left, see that there? That's the carotid artery. When it branches off the first left efferent branchial artery and goes to the left, that's the carotid artery, okay, it's bringing blood to the whole front part of the brain up there, okay? Then, when it goes off to the left here, that's known as root of the dorsal aorta, okay? The left root, because you're on the left side of the body. There's also a right root of the, 
dorsal aorta on this side of the body. Okay. So all four of the efferent branchial arteries are bringing blood to the root of the dorsal aorta. Okay. These dorsal aorta are going to combine the roots of them at the same location where your subclavian arteries and your celiac are branching off. Okay. Which I haven't really cleared out because it's basically happening right up in this general messy area that I haven't cleaned out right here. Okay. But some, some, somebody, if you guys might, might want to do that and search for this area, okay? Coming off right about this same spot are your subclavian arteries, okay? Your subclavian arteries are paired. There's one on each side of the body. Here's looks like what was one right here. Can you see it, that pink thing right there? Traveling right there. That was bringing blood to the pectoral fin. Okay, so that's why they're paired, because you've got a fin on this side and a fin on that side. Sub left, this is your left subclavian, and there's a right subclavian on the other side. Branching off in the same, so this is your left subclavian, there's your right subclavian, and then there's also a real thick artery that's called the celiac artery, which if I move stuff around in here, might be able to find. Your celiac artery is branching off of your dorsal aorta, okay, just the same as your subclavians are, and it's bringing blood into the body cavity here, which is known as the coelom. All right. So, celiac arteries branching off dorsal aorta, subclavians branching off dor dorsal aorta. Okay. You also have branching off the dorsal aorta, which obviously is just your main pink thing here, is your dorsal aorta. All right. Now it's not a root of the dorsal aorta; it is now dorsal aorta confused. You're going to have short little um, arteries that are branching off of it, and you're going to have long arteries branching off of it. The short ones will stop right here in the darkness, okay, because the darkness here is the kidneys. So the little short ones are called renal arteries, okay. The long ones, you see how this one's gone past the darkness and in the muscle here? Those are called segmental arteries because they're going to the segments of the muscle, right? What is this mu type of musculature up here? You guys should have studied that last. Hi, what? Nope, these are epaxials. Hypaxials are the lower ones. Okay, so above and below the lateral line. Okay, but close. At least you knew the term, so that's good. So, hypaxials, if you think of like hypo, okay, or like hypothermia, your blood, you know, if your blood is dropping, it's below, something like that. Okay, epaxials, like the epic or whatever, it's always on top. Okay, or major, whatever, whatever works to make it make sense to you. Okay, so now you've got your celiac artery, remember, which is the main artery branching off of your dorsal aorta and bringing blood into the body cavity. And there's only a couple of arteries you need to know once you're in the body cavity. One of them you need to know is... If I can find it. Covered in fat. Um, well... This is your stomach. What's the artery that brings blood to the stomach? Gastric. Gastric. Okay. Um, this is your gas gland. What's the art name of the artery that brings blood to the gas gland? Pneumatic. Mm -hmm. Think of it like lungs, okay? Like you can get pneumonia, but it's bringing oxygen into the swim bladder, so pneumatic, okay? And then you've got your intestines, and there's arteries all over it, so what are those called? <laughs> Intestinal arteries. And then I think... That's pretty much all you need to know for internal arteries. Segmental, renal, pneumatic, gastric, intestinal, and then the common cardinal veins, which I already showed you before we started. Okay? So if you may want...